electricity and water, more electricity you use, more you pay. But the voltage that you give is a uniform. You can't get voltage as you like. Electricity board has standard. If you are a high tension customer, HT customer, you get at this volt. If you are a LT consumer, you get at this volt. So you are not able to dictate to the electricity board ki I want at so and so voltage, so and so power. There are standard two, three options, you have to take one of them. So the disadvantage of cloud is you cannot say that my business is peculiar. I will not use your standard sales order. I want my sales order to, you know, uh, come out in a, a completely different way. So in cloud, you cannot customize too much in summary. So that is a disadvantage of cloud. That is why I suggest if you are a very large organization and if your needs are very peculiar, then you better go for on-site. So that it is worth spending that money and developing an ICT. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, this is one of my favorite graphs. This comes from my experience. <coughs> lot of people when they get onto ERP, they start with resistance. I'm talking about inside the organization. Oh, as a both technology I'm not Then he listens from various forums like this and goes and says, Chalo, let me get into ERP. He reaches the euphoria. Euphoria matlab, ERP is going to solve all my problems. <coughs> I don't know whether you believe it or not. I went to a client last week in near Bombay, Taloja. The client's demand was, uske jo pallets hai, pallet mein koon sa pallet mein keel data hai, koon mein keel thik hai, ye ERP se ho janna chata hai. So I think that was a too much of an expectation. So I told him that there is no ERP in the world which can tell you which pallet has got the right, uh, you know, nails in right place. Something has to be done by human being also. So all I am saying is, a stage comes when people think all my problems will get solved by putting into ERP, but it doesn't happen. Then his expectation again starts coming down. Then the, there's a go live phase when the ERP is switched on. Then it reaches a stage where people think that this whole investment is a waste. There is a desperation phase stage. People say that, you know, I've invested so much time and effort, now let me get out of this ERP. But that is a point where you should not give up because after the initial what is called stabilization phase of three, four months, then when people really start using get discipline and putting in real data, then you have a recovery stage when the real benefit of ERP happens. Why I am sharing this graph with you is, when you start this journey, if you are at this desperation stage, don't give up. There is the message I am trying to give through this. Next slide please. Okay, the other part. See, often people think that uh, ERP is an IT initiative, IT manager ko bulate hai, bolte hai, boss, aap ora kali SAP se baat karo. 20 users, 30 users, finance, 3 users, sales, 4 users, train karo logo ko aur shuru kar do. But there is a very big mistake that the top management thinks just because top management is convinced ERP is good, all their employees are convinced ERP is good. It is not like that. There are three things which people investing in ERP should be very careful about. Number one is people. What about people? Two things about people. One is training, second is motivation. Initially, after your babu khata pencil leke ya excel sheet mein kaam karta tha, when you force him, nahi, aapko ERP mein hi sales order raise karna hai, initially he will not do it. Why? Because there's a lot of additional mental work. He has to click various screens, enter numbers. So please take care of it. Please ensure he is trained well and also you motivate him by giving some incentives or something to switch to the system. Next is the process. Often people make the mistake. Whatever process they are running for last 20-30 years, the same process they implement in ERP, which is not a good idea. My suggestion is instead of trying to force your process on a standard ERP, please try to follow the standard process of the standard ERP. Because believe me, ye jo ek lakh customer SAP kharida hai aur implement kiya hai, ye log SAP ko regular feedback de 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 de. Based on this feedback, SAP has continuously improved for 30 years. So when you are buying the package, you are also buying the wisdom that comes with the package. So please don't try to compel the software engineer to, you know, uh, customize the ERP too much and put your process. Please try to follow the standard process. Last is structure. Often what I found is, is I'm, in fact today I am doing a project in Saudi Arabia. Unka das bara affiliated units hai, thik hai? So ye das bara affiliated unit ka jo finance head hai, apna apna hisab se chart of accounts bana ke apna apna wo ledger maintain karte hai. So when the group CFO wants a consolidated statement at the end of the month, he find I have 40 subsidiaries, I am in the head office, I want a total picture. Or total picture banana mein 15 din lag jata hai. Because standardizing across 15 systems is a hellish task. 
So what I request is, if you go for this ERP option, please take these three factors and account for it. So what about people is suitability training, suitability. If somebody is very adamant not to get into the system, better not force him, give somebody younger, somebody more flexible. <coughs> Giving complete training, coaching, retention. Now there is a reverse problem. I have seen enterprises which has implemented SAP. Uska jo pehle software ekta banda tha, somewhere he has done MSc or somewhere from a local college and he used to do Excel sheet and all that. Ab usko malik ne SAP ka training diya. Chhe mahina ka, tola rupa kacha kar diya. And he became an expert, he set the whole thing. And the moment he set up the whole thing, after six months, he started getting calls from software company, another company, and not from neighboring larger industries. And you have been offering him maybe 15,000 a month or 20,000 a month, and now he's getting 40,000 a month. So suddenly one day he leaves, and you are left high and dry, because you are the only one who knew everything about ERP in your company. So please remember, whenever you are training people, you are making them valuable in the market, job market. So think carefully that if I am training them, if I am training them, why don't you give them to us? You should give enough of reward, promotion, make sure you don't jump. Process, documentation, very important. And structure may be very careful to report. If the sales order is going out, then make him report to the government in charge, not to somebody sitting in the office. So all those things have to be considered. Yeah, next thing. So I am not going to this, you are all I can see it's a very mature audience. Most of the people are uh, very senior people here. So you know in sales what happens, sales to warehouse, to accounting, to receiving, how that chain occurs. I'm sure with or without ERP you are doing it. You might be doing it on a bahi khata, but you are doing it. Next please. Similarly, production planning. I'm sure you must be doing some sort of demand planning. Kitna maal niklega agla mahina, agla next teen mahina kitna maal niklega, accordingly you must be buying raw material. But what the ERP does, is it makes it very accurate, especially if you have got three, four different units, then combining the demand and splitting it properly is a very, very difficult task. So doing it on the system makes it easier. Next please. Purchasing process, again, see purchasing me kya hota hai? You, you are purchasing something, you are receiving something and you are paying something else. What we call three-way tally. Aapne purchase order kya diya tha, maal kya aya hai? Goods received, kitna hua, usme rejected, kitna hua, accept, kitna hua, finally, usne invoice kitna diya, aapne pay kiya. This reconciliation is a huge, hellish problem, but on a year, believe me, it's all visible to you. Next slide, please. Okay. When you go into a year, please understand why I'm explaining this. Again, I'll give an example. I was in Chennai uh, last week, and this was a real estate company. So, I asked him how many units are. He said, I have 6-7. I said, okay, I can see it on the ERP system. If the ERP system was on, there were 92 companies. In the ERP, there is a different company code in the ERP. That is what he has explained. In each company code, there are business areas. So, I came back and told him, boss, in your system, there are 92 company codes. You said, there are 10 or 12 units. He said, no, no, land ceiling act is under. What is that? More than 40 acres, it can't be any company's name. There is a land ceiling act. So, these are the rest of the 80 companies, the purpose of it is that the land will remain in its name, and there will be no other transaction in it. Okay, so Indian laws are peculiar, and to beat the Indian laws, the systems are also peculiar. So, what I am saying is, when you are doing this company code business area, the way ERP is designed, you may have to do a little bit of intelligent thinking with your implementation partner, how to do it in a way that you don't, it doesn't, accounting should not become a mess. If you want to reconcile it, again you are back to square one. Next slide. Okay, just a little bit of technical thing. I think so far I have not spoken anything on technology, but this little bit I want to explain to everybody. When ERP on the cloud, what we do is, first like experimental server, we make forms and applications, then we test it. After testing it, we 